Monster Trio. How it was positioned in the story kind of makes it seem like the original Monster Trio was Garp, Sengoku, and uh, Sudo. But Sudo doesn't really matter in the story. Like, she's just there as, like... A figurehead or just a count because she's a woman and Oda needed to fill a quota she doesn't matter at least not yet and she's a hundred years old she's not that old but she's pretty old we interrupt our program to bring you this important message okay boys and girls I have a game changer for you and it might surprise you and you're so lucky because I absolutely wish I had this when I was trying to build and establish credit you know what I'll say men and women because this is grown-up stuff and this is stuff we need to go through as we go through our time skip which is growing up and that revolves around credit so this video is sponsored by extra as the first debit card that builds you credit and earns reward points like a credit card when I was younger trying to establish credit I had to get a secured credit card which means putting my own money up front to use to build credit with extra it's much different but easier so this is how it works you connect extra to your bank account then they spot you for everyday purchases you make with the card and you auto pay extra the next business day at the end of the month all the payments are tallied up and then it's reported to the credit bureaus guys this is literally a life hack because in addition to that you also earn up to one percent in redeemable reward points for every purchase you make we love one piece and have grown up with one piece but this is real life stuff and we need to handle it as well extra makes all of this simple simple and it's not really changing the way you do things. So to start building credit and earning award points on purchases you're going to make anyway, sign up for extra with the link in my description and start building your credit with a debit card. Yes, I said it, a debit card. The only significant thing Sudo has done the entire story was listen to Doflamingo talk about the Throne Wars. Other than that shit, Sudo does not matter. So I'm not going to disrespect the monster trio by even putting her in there. Like literally, Suru is Sakura. Okay, maybe that's a bit far, but that's the <laughs> Those are the vibes, right? You got Garp, the hero of the Marines. You got Sengoku, former fleet admiral. Then you got Suru, the vice admiral that can wash niggas. Like, something don't fit here. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, the original monster trio. That's not the case at all, but that's what I'm pinning them. The original monster trio, Garp, Sengoku, and Rayleigh, right? You got these three old niggas. And if you guys have seen the top 30 or any top 30, like typically they're like right behind each other. I call them the old man trio. Like I put them all in the same spot because they're just three legends that they're just, they're just vibing, right? They don't really have anything to do for real. They've already proven themselves. So they're just, they're just here. But now we're going to talk about them in their prime and we're going to rank them in their prime. How do you view these characters? I think the easiest rank is Garp Sengoku Rayleigh, right? Just going down the list that way just because of what the story's been telling us. I don't know how I feel about that. Just keeping it a being. I, Sengoku gets a lot of disrespect really i think it's a bit unclear as to where we could rank him because he could be top five and then garp i don't know some stories might be bogus with that one but for these three i wonder if like history is actually telling us the truth right because again in one piece people be lying in one piece things are never exactly what they seem so what they tell us about sengoku sengoku is basically a paper pusher that went out when he felt like it basically all of his accomplishments that somewhat tied to garp he's a fleet admiral that didn't accomplish much because his hands were tied right as opposed to garp who was the hero of the marines he was out here pushing p boxing everybody 1v1 taking roger in but in all actuality a lot of that is bullshit right and we got Rayleigh the Dark King right we're not even sure what the hell that means it just sounds cool so we just keep saying it the Dark King is one of the more popular characters in One Piece we don't even know a lot about him we don't even know his last name actually that's not true his last name is Silvers is that really his fucking name what are the odds right <laughs> yeah so Silvers Rayleigh again the easy rank is Garp Sengoku Rayleigh and I think most people put Garp and Sengoku like relatively close to each other but Rayleigh is kind of a, a slight gap right people don't have Rayleigh on that level uh, some people don't I, I, shit i do really gets a lot of hype the hype is warranted we've seen it time and time again we've seen how he's impacted the story how he's impacted just how luffy's growth and development just how he's progressed but then helping the straw hats like he's been so instrumental in their growth and them just getting to where they are now if he didn't suggest them going to train and taking some time off to just you know collect themselves because they got their ass whooped they probably got their ass whooped to get in the new world right because nobody had any concept or understanding of hockey so he was instrumental the hype is real for kizaru old though he was breathing heavy he wouldn't have beaten kizaru in my opinion but the fact that he can fight an admiral just getting out of bed that's crazy we heard what garb said we can't deal with two legends at the same time with whitebeard and rayleigh they knew where rayleigh was the entire time but they didn't want that dark smoke <laughs> yeah they didn't want that uh, so they let him rock how i kind of rate rayleigh is based off of zoro right where i put zoro and where i think zoro would end up probably slightly ahead of rayleigh but it's not really clear how close rayleigh is to roger but based on how close i think zoro is to luffy i think that's kind of the same thing with rayleigh and roger now roger's on another level right 
It's clear. And really, at this point, has not used Advanced Conqueror's Hockey. But if he had it, would I be surprised? No. Even the concept of Advanced Conqueror's probably wasn't fleshed out when really was really doing his thing. So it's not that crazy to think he has Advanced Conqueror's. I think in regards to fighting concepts, he's one of the characters in the story that understands that the most right even talking about future sight to luffy and the fact that he talked about it means that he probably encountered it before maybe fall category whole cake island took an l and now he's like bro some of the strongest users nah i don't think really lost the category in whole cake island but he's very experienced i still put him at third but i think it's a lot closer than people think i think the main topic here the main discussion is saying goku and garp because it's a misconception between these two a lot of people feel like it's overwhelmingly in garp's favor and i'm just like bro what are y'all reading okay so first off Garp again if you guys been following the channel for a minute you guys understand just it's a love-hate relationship between me and that nigga because I hated him after Marine Ford because I thought he was a bitch I thought he just did the wrong thing I didn't think he made the right decision but that was me at the time I was emotional you know what I'm saying Ace being out of the story it was just kind of like bruh like that shit ain't right you went through all that and he dead like I was mad at Ace too to be honest with you but that dead the Don scene and Garp <sighs> When Makino said nobody's hurting as much as him, I was like, what the fuck? What are you talking about, bruh? Luffy saw this dude die right in front of him. So, you know, anyway, back to Garp. I wasn't feeling him, right? I thought he made the wrong decision about choosing his life or basically his job over his family but basically his job is his life everything he's done his entire life revolved around his job from what we know right so it was hard to tell him to throw all that shit away just because ace made stupid decisions after stupid decisions but ace he had he had a lot of daddy issues going on but garp we've reconciled we cool now but it's a lot of fraudulence going on there right not fraudulence but misconception again with garp and things he's accomplished bringing in roger he didn't really bring roger in roger turned himself in fighting rocks well, he didn't really take rocks down he's fighting with roger to take rocks down right and personally i believe there was some infighting right among the rocks pirates i don't think whitebeard was fighting against roger and garp i don't think so i think some shit happened and i mentioned this before i don't think rocks is the type of person that y'all think he is or that the marines are trying to paint him as but again perspective that shit is important in one piece right but perspective is important here as well as far as you subscribing to this channel because you got this far man it's about time for you to hit that red button you know what i'm saying we're about to get into it because i'm not saying that sengoku stronger than garp i'm just saying garp and sengoku they're pretty much close to being equal in my opinion if you're starting to agree right Right? if you're starting to agree or if you agree a little bit by the time we get there you gotta sub and you gotta click the post notifications and like feel me anyway garp it's a, a lot of things going on there the hero of the marines i think he's a symbolic figure so people look at him that way right and he understand i think it's a it's a weird way that the world government they like the fact that garp is a part of them because if they're basically controlling a d clan member it's kind of like he's working for the man after the man did what he did to him you feel me so them controlling garp is kind of them looking at him like bro you such like you a d doing this and kind of like saul you know like you can work for the world government but what change are you gonna bring about and for garp i mean he's inspired people right based on how he's carried himself been a free marine for the most part that's why he didn't want to become an admiral but he hasn't really you know accomplished that much as a marine what has he actively done for the amount of time that he's been there now now i gotta say garp could be a part of a secret society that's slowly but surely working against the world government sword and if he's been the person behind that kudos if not what was the point of all that you feel me sengoku now i gave sengoku a lot more props after roger specifically mentioned him right as okay that's somebody that can give him a challenge straight from the horse's mouth roger said that shit and then the fact that he's a fleet admiral people don't rate that position as highly but it is a very important position and even mother carmel they're about to sell a big mom they said big mom has even fleet admiral potential which shows that it's a slight step above now garp he could have been an admiral i give him the edge as the strongest marine because of just importance in the story but i think if him and sengoku fought it'd be like akainu and akiji right i think it'd be the same thing where they fight for 10 days and then garp maybe edges him out but you know sengoku got the devil fruit right and he got conqueror's hockey some people might not know that shit he has conqueror's hockey so is it far-fetched that he has conqueror's hockey coding not really so him using the buddha conqueror's hockey coding that's a lot to deal with now i don't even think it's it's not an overwhelming fight it's 50 50 in my opinion but garb gets the edge because we like garp a little more but sengoku he got a lot of notches on his belt you feel me it's not as overwhelming as the story tries to paint it but after we get more information it's kind of like bro these niggas they mad close to each other i think these three old guys are very important figures in the one piece world obviously we know what role garb played in the story 
Sen uh, Rayleigh, Bailey and his impact on Luffy and Sengoku. I wonder if it's coming with him impacting Law in some way, helping Law in some way. Of course, he could have captured Law in Dressrosa. Law, I don't think he's beating Sengoku in Dressrosa. I know Law's been going crazy in Wano, but Sengoku could have captured Law. I think he has a greater role to play. I really wanted to talk about these three characters because I think they're so significant. And of course, they're part of the older generation, but I don't think their time is over. Maybe Rayleigh, right? Because Rayleigh has done so much already. Like, look, look at where Luffy is now. Like, that's that's pretty much a product of Rayleigh and his teachings, right? Giving Luffy the fundamentals. If Luffy didn't have that, he wouldn't have made it this far. No way. Garp, he's ushering the next generation of Marines. Look at Kobe. Kobe, when he comes back? I don't know, bro. I'm not saying he's not going to get one shot because Luffy's <laughs> Luffy. But I expect Kobe to be a monster, right? Sengoku, I expect more from him. There's a reason why Oda didn't just have him retire, right? He's here trying to impact and make change. He's talking about Wano and the importance of Wano. Yo, I legit would not be surprised if Sengoku pulled up in Wano, right? Just because, I mean, what, do you, what else do you got to do? Fucking feed his goat? Shout out to that goat, by the way. Niggas, he be clean. That, that's a clean ass goat. I wonder if we ever have a scenario or a situation where Rayleigh, Sengoku, and Garp would be in the same place. I don't think it's possible. Unless Rayleigh is involved in the final battle, I don't think it's possible. And let me ask you guys this question. Does any of these guys, do any of them die? Does Garp, Sengoku, or Rayleigh die? Because, I mean, they're so loved, bro. All these characters. Sengoku, not nearly as much as Garp and Rayleigh, but man, his importance is there. But I expect more in the story. It's crazy, right? Because he's just as bad as Akainu, where he was devising plans with Akainu to trick score and all that, but he doesn't have the reputation. Of course, Akainu is more radical. <laughs> Sengoku is a badass nigga himself, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. That's somebody I want to find out more about because it's clear that he's played an important role in the story and I've lost all hope hope in finding out shit about Kong because Kong who the hell knows right but y'all give me your thoughts how do you feel about these three characters the original monster trio yeah I'm not gonna I'm not gonna shit on Suda no more she she's been through enough <laughs> she was bad back in the day though right you saw I was like damn Garp Garp that's you Sengo what is you but she seemed like a career woman she probably chose career over everything you know what I'm saying she probably don't got no kids what am I talking about yo like the video subscribe <laughs> let me give me your thoughts thank you to my patrons I appreciate you guys so much make sure to follow me on Twitter at Brogerty Ace follow me on Instagram Brogerty D dot ace thank you to my patrons i appreciate you guys so much again guys be sure to like and subscribe and i'll catch you in the next one peace I start doubting me, I felt lost. I be rather.